Hi and welcome to the Alpha Scanner. Today I want to show you a educational tool here under the Resources tab. Uh, that's this tab right here on the home page. You can see that I've got uh, a Trade Planner, Pivot Point Calculator, and Fibonacci Calculator. What we're going to talk about today is the Pivot Point Calculator. Now the Pivot Point Calculator, you might have heard of secret floor trader levels or um, hidden support and resistance and that sort of thing. Uh, but, but pivots have been around basically since the 19th. 1920s. A man named uh, Harry Wheeler is the uh, Harry Wheeler Chase actually is the guy who uh, invented uh, the formula. Basically, it's a mathematical formula that takes the previous day's high, low, and close to come up with a level of potential support and resistance levels. Now, the way that they're typically interpreted is that um, most action will generally occur between what's known as R1 and S1. That uh, that's generally going to be you know forecast the range for the next day. If you get movement outside of there, then you're looking at a breakout. Um, the way we're going to look at them right now is just to look at um, the, the previous day's level for the S&P 500. So yesterday, the uh, the high level for the net for the SPY was 107.33. The low was 105.81, and it closed at uh, 105.89. So once you enter these numbers in here, what you'll see is that the numbers over on the right hand side will change. So we'll calculate and this is what we see right now. So we see that the pivot for the next day, this, or the pivot for today actually because we're, we're trading right now, is 106.34, uh, S2 104.82, R2 107.86. So keep an eye on that 107.86 and the pivot 106.34 because we're going to take a look at the market right now. So what you, what you see in the screen right now is that this is live trading during the course of the day here. It's February 9th and what we've seen today is we'd seen a, uh, a actually Let's, let's frame this with two days worth. We'd seen the market gap up. It pulled back and looked like maybe it was going to hold above that daily S1 level. That S1 did fail, and you can see when it did fail, the market dropped immediately down to the pivot level. Well, we had some news regarding these sovereign uh, funds and that sort of thing. The news is really not important, but what happened was that the market made a very strong rally up beyond, and this is the daily VWAP. I probably shouldn't even have that on there so I don't confuse you, but right up to about that daily R2. Now, these levels are mathematically uh, are mathematical numbers. They're used by a lot of people. People, that is a lot of institutions, uh, savvy individual traders. You see people talking about them on Twitter. And what I like to use them for isn't what most people will look at them for. And, and I don't claim to be a pivot expert. But what I like to do is look at them and say, you know, for instance, especially when we have uh, R2, when we see a market and I'm long, uh, you know, you get long, let's say, after this little, little low volume pullback and as it's breaking out, well, these become good targets. And enough people watch them that it becomes like a lot of other technical analysis. That is that uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that, uh, you know, enough people are looking at that uh, S2 or R2 level and saying, well, that's a good area for me to maybe make some, uh, take some profits off the table or or if they're saying that's where I'll stop buying because it, it would be extended at that point uh, then you start to see these battles form in there now they are just one very small piece of a complicated uh, puzzle that is the stock market overall and people use them for stocks they use them for uh, futures they use them for Forex and in and, and other commodities as well so they're widely used and let me show an example of just uh, two, uh, three days ago Let's take a look at the action uh, during a market sell-off. What we had seen on February 5th was the market dropped down. It looked like maybe it was going to hold S1, uh, but during that, you know, so it was down for the day, and then it broke that S1 level and immediately came down and touched intraday right upon that S2. It then bounced a little bit, a little shakeout, and then a very powerful rally up through that level. So when you look at an individual stock, let's look at uh, 
uh, Google. Uh, let's look at Google for today. In fact, let's let's go to today is the ninth. Uh, you can see that basically we've be, been trading between the pivot and the and 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 R1 for the most part. So you know Google is pretty range bound in here. The way that I like to use them a lot of times is that if I see a stock that I like, let's say I liked Google and I saw that it gapped up. Um, what I'll look for is I'll look for a pullback and see if that pivot then holds as support. If the if we get a pullback towards that support level, then I'll look down at the one minute time frame and maybe get long above the daily VWAP and then set my stop. Of course, today now in in this case it wouldn't work, and I could easily build a PowerPoint and show you perfect examples. But that would probably give you the wrong impression of how you should be using these pivots because again they're meant as just a uh, you know another piece of information a reference uh, that we can compare price to and you can calculate them on a daily level you can calculate them obviously uh, for weekly time frames or you can calculate them for even monthly and what a lot of people look for is what they look for a confluence of pivots so they're looking for what's the daily pivot uh, level that for the next day and so you're using you know yesterday's or at the end of the day you plug this number in and get the pivot uh, and the uh, corresponding support and resistance levels uh, for the next day. So it just generally gives us a uh, you know an important level for the next day. It's not meant to um, uh, give us any exact turning points, but just estimate some potential support and resistance levels. Uh, for the market is is really the way you want to look at it. So uh, I find them again useful for sometimes for entries. Uh, they're you know near a pivot, for instance, especially first thing in the morning if the market gaps up, pulls back, and finds some support near that uh, pivot, and then begins to to rally higher from there. Uh, that's often a, a place where uh, you'll see some support uh, found. And the reason for that is is because enough people use them. They're they're built into a large amount of, of uh, you know algorithms that uh, that the pro that the uh, uh, big firms use to to go in and um, they create all kinds of ca complex al algorithms around these uh, pivot formulas to come up with potential buy and sell levels. So um, you know, how you decide to use them is is, is a personal preference, but it's just a, a, a nice tool that. It, we wanted to provide here on Alpha Scanner so that you can come back and do a little bit of research. It's a free resource. It's available anytime you want it here at Alpha Scanner. And uh, I hope it was helpful for, uh, to you. Thank you.